This brings us to the matter of COVID treatment, because obviously we've talked a lot about vaccination to prevent it. There is a bizarre trend now in America of people. Now, obviously, there is treatment for people who have acquired the disease, but there is a trend of people who have decided not to get vaccinated, but who now want monoclonal antibody treatment, which is hugely invasive by comparison to vaccination and hugely expensive. You've got it. There's an amazing piece, New York Times. That's where I got this from, by the way. And a good friend of mine, Manus, give, give him a shout out. Manus sent me this. And it's a fascinating piece of journalism, right? So these monoclonal antibodies, Trump took them, for example, Regeneron, make one type, for instance, you know. And yet people who won't take a vaccine are prepared to take these monoclonals and they would have similar issues if you're against vaccines. You know, they're human made. They were developed quickly. All the usual criticisms apply to these antibodies. And yet the ones who are denying the vaccine are happy to take the antibodies. Now, you might think this is good in a way because they're saving their lives, by the way. These antibodies work great. 70% decrease hospitalization. They're 100 times more expensive. They take 90 minutes to administer by infusion. You need specialist nurses. It's a huge drain on the resources, whereas a vaccine would be, you know, much more cheap and much more effective. So doctors in America are scratching their heads. And in, saying, in rudimentary terms that I can understand, are they? it's essentially like priming a pump. You, you build the antibodies and put them into you so yeah. your body doesn't have to build them. It's called passive immunity. So so the vaccine actually brings out the antibodies and they defend you, you know, and you keep making them when you're reinfected. In this case, you're just using the antibodies. It's a one shot thing. Your body can't make them. It's, it's a, you know, you make them in a lab base. They're, they're, they're made by drug companies. Another thing that people criticize. So drug companies make them, you, they, you inject them into your body and they mop up the spike and stop you getting really sick, basically. You know, but then, then they go away. Unlike a vaccine, which will protect you, you know, and will stop you spreading it more importantly. So if you take a vaccine, I mean, there are people getting infected with the vaccine, but still there's a decrease in transmission with vaccination. So, so doctors are and in America some of them are going what's going on they're mystified by this thing. now it's the southern states mainly you know they've used a million doses have been used of these antibodies for example huge demand a million um, doses at 90 minutes of infusion yeah, for each at $2,000 a pop can you imagine the Biden administration is putting up at one point 150 million to help start paying so you can get it for free by the way so the Biden administrations are going to pay for all these antibodies to be and you can't deny people treatment either by the way obviously but it's just the same the vaccine as cheap as chips. You know, why would you not take a vaccine? Because but surely the, your criticisms will be similar as you have towards the antibodies. So the federal government could end up picking up a tab 100 times greater That's because right. of, in some instances, personal choice. I don't want That's the vaccine exactly right. and you have to treat me if That's I get right. it. That's right. And what's happening, it's very simple. The numbers are amazing and this is stopping people dying. These work really well. The death rate in America will be much higher if they weren't using them. So they're a great thing in that regard, you know. But again, the mystery is, the, great, the, the line I saw one doctor say was, it's like you take out car insurance and you remove the brakes on your car. It's that kind of, that's the way the thinking goes. You know? So it's so very unusual. Now, of course, what they're trying to do is say, please take the vaccine because we'll save loads of money. It, the, the, your, your, your concerns about the antibody would apply to the vaccine anyway and vice versa. And you'll dodge a 90-minute uh, infusion. And you will dodge. And, they, and, and, and in Houston, they've had to convert gyms into, to make them, uh, to be able to deploy these antibodies. Huge resource demand. Nurses are being transferred out of surgical uh, rooms into these facilities. Just to, the, the demand is so high there because there's so much infection going on. So again, it's a real puzzle, isn't it? Before I let you go, um, text asking, can you ask Luke his opinion on the current situation in Israel? They're going through a very heavy fourth wave despite very high vaccination rates. They are, that's true. The case rates are up there, but again, hospitalisation's down. So that's the good news in that regard. Clearly Delta, and the problem with Israel was, Anton, there was a three-week gap between the two Pfizer shots. That might be slightly too short. In the UK, it was nine to 12 weeks and, and, and there's less waning happening in the UK. So sadly, Israel might have been a bit quick off the blocks, but, but the good good news again is hospitalizations are low you know so even though the case rates have shot up and the surge is there but case numbers the, the level of hospitalization is being is, is, is low because of the vaccination and then now of course they're starting their booster campaign I think they've boosted like three million people already in Israel if you can believe it so they're really ramping up the uh, the third shot at the moment